Hello, Colorado Realtors. I'm Scott Peterson. Thank you for joining me for another edition of Legal Bites. So in today's edition, we're going to talk about a situation that I get, I get questions of quite a bit on the legal hotline, kind of frustrated brokers, and really candidly, both listing brokers and buyer's agents uh, that are calling me because they don't quite know what to do in a situation where a seller does not want to return the earnest money after a buyer correctly or uh, rightfully terminates a contract to buy and sell. You got a frustrated, angry seller, and they just don't want to give the money back. They don't want to sign the earnest money release. Really frustrating situation, not just for uh, buyers, clearly, who are waiting to get that back that money so that they can move along potentially and purchase another property, but also for listing brokers who get sort of put in the middle between their client, who is uh, often maybe being a little bit bullheaded about the return of the earnest money, and uh, the uh, buyer's agent, who's probably pestering the heck out of the listing agent, to uh, get the earnest money release mutually executed. So the first place I'll start with this is in paragraph 4.3.2 of the contract to buy and sell. And in essence, what that paragraph says is that if a buyer has the right to terminate the contract and rightfully does so in a timely fashion, uh, that would be exerting a proper inspection objection as an example, or title objection, or any of the other contingencies, and they do so timely, uh, then the seller agrees, per the terms of 4.3.2 of the contract, to execute an earnest money release within three days of seller's receipt of that form. That's sometimes easier said than done. And as you good realtors all know, uh, contract gets terminated, sellers you know, move themselves out of the house, or they've incurred some other time and expense in getting ready to uh, move themselves out of the house. And they're often frustrated at that point when they get it. And, Maybe they're making good faith arguments or breach of good faith or bad faith kind of arguments against the buyer, uh, or maybe they're objecting in some other way that really all the parties, maybe with the exception of the seller, understand that uh, the seller's not really acting in good faith in refusing to sign the earnest money release. It happens more often than maybe all of you would think. So uh, tempers flare. Seller just says, hey, I'm not signing the release. You can sue me. You can uh, do whatever you'd like. Uh, but I'm not going to sign it. Well, we know that paragraph 24 of the uh, contract to buy and sell gives the earnest money holders uh, certain rights with regard to what they can do in the event of an earnest money dispute. If brokers are holding earnest money, then they have the exact same rights that a title company or other third-party earnest money holder would have in taking advantage of uh, paragraph 24 and an earnest money holder's rights in terms of a dispute. I don't love it when brokerages hold earnest money. I think it unfairly puts them kind of into the middle of earnest money disputes. Um, even when a, a listing broker, a seller's agent, or a brokerage firm knows that their seller is being bullheaded, they often are in a position where they don't want to release that earnest money in the absence of an executed earnest money release because if for some reason uh, they wrongfully release it and the seller turns out to be right uh, and not just being bullheaded, then it's entirely possible or probable, in fact, that the uh, brokerage firm is going to have to cut a check to that seller after the fact. So for their own security, they want an earnest money release. And the same is true of title companies, generally speaking. So <clears throat> what's your role in this? If you're the buyer's broker, you're, uh, you're frustrated as well. Your deal's just blown up. You're, you're going to have to go out and help uh, your buyer find a new property to purchase before you make your fee. So of course you're frustrated, but you do have an obligation to make sure that you're communicating at this point when you've got this kind of dispute going on, communicating in writing to the listing broker, to the listing broker's managing or employing broker um, is often a good time to get them into the loop on this discussion, um, as well as the seller. And uh, you're going to request, very quickly, hopefully request mediation pursuant to paragraph 23 of the contract. Uh, you're going to start that 30-day clock ticking on the mediation request. But you're going to be communicating in, in writing at this point. That's what's really important. And getting all the parties in. Um, if you're the, it, getting all the parties involved. If you're the seller's broker, uh, it's going to be emotional for the seller. You are going to be kind of caught in the crosshairs. There's probably going to be some blame shifted to the, bro to the listing broker, to you at this point, for letting this deal somehow blow up or letting the buyer take advantage of the seller. Clearly, you're not at fault, but you're going to have to deal with the repercussions of that. So. You're going to have to try and help your, your seller uh, make a cooler head kind of decision or let cooler heads prevail and, and remind them of their responsibilities per the terms of the contract, per section 4.3.2 of the contract, to turn around 
in good faith and executed earnest money release within three, business, or within three days of receiving that. Um, help them understand the implications of not doing that. And then you're going to advise your seller, if they're really, really bullheaded, advise your seller in writing. Again, this is if you're a listing broker, you're going to send an email or other writing to your seller advising them to say, listen, if you really are intent on hanging, hanging on to this earnest money, I would strongly encourage you to consult with an attorney prior to making any additional decisions on this because there could be some other legal ramifications for a seller who is wrongfully withholding uh, these, his, signature, his or her signature on an earnest money release. So put that advisory to your client, to your, to your seller client in writing if you really feel like they're being uh, unreasonable in the way that they're acting. Uh, in transaction broker, I say, ouch, uh, it's tough. It's particularly hard if you're a transaction broker. You're not supposed to be advocating or advising the clients in your role as TV. Uh, in this case, you're going to be caught square in the middle of an earnest money dispute. And you're going to kind of have to take bits and pieces from both the buyer's broker um, uh, piece of it as well as the seller's broker piece. And without getting into an adversarial, uh, an advisory position, um, uh, a, a situation where you're, where you're instructing a party to do something, again, because you're a transaction broker, uh, you've got to be much more careful here. But take bits and pieces out of the first two uh, uh, statements here on, in terms of the advisory. And again, at this point, you're going to keep everything in writing. You're going to try and, and, and essentially broker a resolution. I mean, that's what you're uh, experienced at doing is brokering transactions. In this case, you're going to try and help them broker a resolution. And again, hopefully cooler heads will prevail and the seller will uh, come to terms with, with the fact that it's probably time to let the money go, get the house back on the market, and, and start searching for the next buyer opportunity out there. So anyhow, tough situation always when you just got a seller that's being bullheaded. If you have specific questions about specific circumstances, the car legal hotline is always available from 9 to 12 and 1 to 4, uh, Monday through Friday. And uh, we always welcome calls and hopefully can get you guys pointed in the right direction on specific circumstances if you have them. Uh, thanks again for joining me for another edition of Legal Bites, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much.